here it is. The big video on twin flames that I've been promising. So there's a lot of distortion, distraction, psychosis, and generalized angst around the twin flame and the twin flame journey. And I want to bring some clarity, some gentle awareness and some understanding to this, hopefully to offset some of the distortion, hopefully to clear up some of the confusion and to just generally educate on what the whole twin flame actually journey actually is. So <clears throat> first and foremost, the original tribes that seeded the planet that came from God, that God created into being male and female gendered beings, human beings that came and seeded the planet. That is the original soul twin flames at a soul level because it had to be consciousness, which is androgynous as a soul expression, which is also androgynous, chose to be human beings as male and female. So the original soul tribes are the original twins from that perspective. Then we come all the way down to what is going on within the human collective right now. And the highest, most pure, clean answer is everyone is on a twin flame journey and not in the way that you think. There are many people that think that they're in a twin flame relationship and they're not. There are people that believe that their twin is coming and that's not an actuality either. While at the same time, everyone is, if you choose to look at it through the lens of the twin flame and use the twin flame label, everyone is on a twin flame journey. So as a consciousness, the twin flame is Jesus, as the Christed Masculine and Mary Magdalene as the Divine Feminine. They were the original soul twin flames that we mostly would know about. Although I am quite sure that there are other religions and other belief systems and other forms of theology that also have their own version of what a translated twin flame would be. So twin flame is a consciousness first. It's not a person. It's not like there's this one other person somewhere in the 8 billion people that are on the planet right now that is your twin and that somehow you have to attract them, manifest them and bring them in. It's a consciousness. It is a consciousness that drops into or embodies into the human form for certain purposes. So let's look at some, I might not get them all, but let's look at some of the ways this plays out. First of all, regardless of your gender, you are both masculine and feminine, embodying and reunifying as the divine self that is in balance between your own masculine and your own feminine. When you bring those two together within yourself, you rebirth yourself as the God child, the one that is connected back to God, back to your divinity, that is operating from a place of that divine feminine masculine God spark triad, the Holy Trinity. So regardless of your gender, you are always bringing the two into balance. <coughs> Excuse me. The other way that this plays out within the human is that the masculine is the mind, the masculine is electric, and the, the feminine is the heart, the heart is magnetic. Your electromagnetic field is also an expression of the masculine, feminine, unity, twin flame, if you want to use that label, experience of embodiment. So you are always on a journey of embodying yourself as your own twin flame for the purpose of rebirthing yourself as the God spark divine consciousness that you are. This is the journey home. However, people get highly attached to the idea because humans are lacking in love 
that there is a person out there in the world that is their other half, that is their soul essence, that is the one that is going to walk them home. And that is not necessarily the case and actually most often is not the case. Most often, but not always the case. So, <clears throat> excuse me, when we look at the divine feminine and the divine masculine energetic templates, that's not something that you try to bring in. It is a byproduct of healing the wounded feminine and the wounded masculine that is the more of the human template. So the wounded feminine is more of that sort of doormat, people pleaser, seeking, looking for love in all forms and ways. And the wounded masculine is more that forceful, egoic push. If it's not working, push harder. If it's still not working, get up earlier. It's that. So the human, in their human journey, tend to, both genders, tend to swing on the pendulum between being the wounded feminine and being the wounded masculine. And so when we heal those two and we stop all the swinging back and forth, then we open up to allowing more of the divine feminine to come online from within. So you don't go seeking to be a divine feminine or a divine masculine. You allow yourself to dissolve and heal all of the wounds, traumas, and programs that are keeping you in the wounded feminine and the wounded masculine. This is how you bring in those higher dimensional states and consciousnesses from within you. Can the twin flame consciousness play out through another human being? Yes, it can. I, and I have experienced it myself. What this would look like is the typical conversation that you have in the twin flame com communities around the runner and the chaser. So sometimes you have designed for yourself or sometimes the higher self has determined that you need a bit of a shakeup in order to keep moving forward in your ability to break your heart open for the purpose of ascension and healing and evolution to further embody and dissolve and dissolve and embody more of who it is that you came here to be and the best trigger that you've either designed for yourself or the higher self has determined is what is next for you is to bring in this relationship, but it's only for a short period of time. So the higher self or the divine masculine or divine feminine energies can drop into a person and play out a certain activation that triggers you and then that consciousness pulls back out of that human being and the human being goes from, oh my God, I love you so much. This is, the, this is us. This is the thing. We finally found each other to, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that I really feel that way about you. And they are the runner, but they're not actually running away. I mean, I know some of the stories go that the love that I showed them was so potent, they couldn't handle it. So they had to leave. What it is, is, is that the consciousness was only meant to be a part of your reality for a very short period of time so that you wouldn't continually engage in codependent behaviors, but you needed the activation. So the runner runs and then the chaser is left brokenhearted often. And that is the point is to break the heart open so that you can heal and evolve. <clears throat> and then that one becomes sort of the chaser. You know, you said you loved me, you said this would be forever, and now you're running away. So it's not the person. You're not waiting for that person to change their mind and come back. You're not waiting for the other half of you, the other half of your soul, or the other half of your essence, or your beingness, or your divinity, to come and find you so that you can walk home together. You don't actually need anyone not a twin flame, not a soulmate, not a coach, not a reader, not in anything in order to walk you back home. This is your sovereignty. Every single one of us is a sovereign whole being all on our own. 
and anything that sounds like you need someone else to be a part of your journey for any prolonged amount of time is codependency. We are here to eventually become a live stream of experience so that the energies of co-creation and divinity can flow through us and that every now moment is just a now moment. The long-term plan may be for many people that once they embody their own divine masculine and divine feminine template and sort of rebirth themselves into that holy trinity, that then they will magnetize a divine counterpart, a partner, a best friend to do life with because they will have both claimed their sovereignty in their own way through their own journey and that codependency won't be a thing, yet enjoying another person and being a mirror of yourself through another being who has done all of their healing and claimed their sovereignty would be a lovely way to experience the human journey. So that's not to say that while you are your own twin, first and foremost, that you can't at some point magnetize some kind of outer relationship that is a reflection of that but that is where that comes from is comes from within first you are your own twin the twin flame is a consciousness it's not a person and ultimately while the whole runner chaser and activation dynamic can play out it is always temporary it is either by design or it is dictated by your higher self that this is exactly what you need in this now moment to break you open. It doesn't mean that the person that was the runner is somebody that you have to keep chasing after. It's just the way the consciousness presented in your reality and the way that you needed it best. Your mind is the masculine, your heart is the feminine, and this creates your toroidal electromagnetic field that is the magnetic field of co-creation manifestation. So in its purest, cleanest way that I can possibly give words to, the twin flame journey need not be as messy, as distracting, and as distorted as it has become. That is all rooted in the human longing and desire to be loved. And ultimately, at the end of the day, the only love that you are ever, ever truly seeking, the only love that is going to satiate that longing is for your love for yourself. So come into union with you and then see what you can co-create with the rest of outer reality. I hope that this helps. Bye for now.